Racism is a big issue in 21st century America. It's not really a new problem. Human beings have always struggled with treating each other as God intended. But more recently, we've seen people read bigotry and racism into the Bible as a means of criticizing it and the Christian faith. One such example is the encounter between Jesus and the Syrophoenician woman in Mark chapter 7, where Jesus supposedly uses a racial slur. In the text, the woman asks Jesus if he will heal her daughter. And Jesus says, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Progressive Christians see this from a different angle. They see Jesus using a racial slur, but believe there's a positive takeaway from this encounter. We see one example in a video produced by progressive minister Brandon Robertson, who made headlines with a video he released in March 2021. This is what Robertson had to say. Did you know that there's a part of the Gospel of Mark where Jesus uses a racial slur? In Mark chapter 7, there's the account of the Seraphonician woman, a woman who is Syrian and Greek, both of which there were strong biases against within the Jewish community. And she comes to ask Jesus to heal her daughter who's possessed by a demon. And what is Jesus' response? He says, it's not good for me to give the children's food, meaning the children of Israel's food, to dogs. He calls her a dog. What's amazing about this account is that the woman doesn't back down. She speaks truth to power. She confronts Jesus and says, well, you can think that about me, but even dogs deserve the crumbs from the table. Her boldness and bravery to speak truth to power actually changes Jesus' mind. Jesus repents of his racism and extends healing to this woman's daughter. I love this story because it's a reminder that Jesus is human. He had prejudices and bias, and when confronted with it, he was willing to do his work. And this woman was willing to stand up and speak truth. So, there's a lot going on in this video. It's a great example of bad exegesis. Exegesis is essentially the explanation of a biblical text. Now, the first problem is the claim that Jesus purposefully and sinfully uses a racial slur to denigrate the woman, and this is a sin of which he must later repent after the woman stands up to him. This assumption is flawed because the New Testament makes it very clear that Jesus lived a sinless life. Various passages teach that Jesus lived a life of moral perfection. For instance, 1 Peter 1 verses 18 and 19 tell us, You were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb, without blemish or spot. Jesus' perfection is an integral part of God's plan of salvation. This means that there's a slight problem with accusing Jesus of sin because it requires the fundamental reinterpretation of a dozen different doctrines, as well as a complete overhaul of how we are to view both God and his Son. The second issue here is the claim that the woman speaks truth to power. Now, this phrase is commonly used to mean standing up for what is right in the face of an oppressor and demanding a moral response. This reads modern concerns into the biblical text. Now, there's no doubt that racism is a massive problem in our world today, but the situation wasn't exactly the same in antiquity. Anyone who properly understands ancient perspectives on race, women, and the other, knows that Jesus doesn't use a racial slur here. Now, we know this because of two words, first and dog. If Jesus had wanted to insult the woman, he would have used the term kuon, which meant dog, but was also used as a derogatory word. And we've got similar uses of the same word in English. Kuon could be used in the sense of a bad person, someone who was sexually immoral, a male prostitute, or just was the equivalent of what we would call the B word. Well, Jesus doesn't use this word. He doesn't use the word kuon. Instead, he uses a diminutive form of the word kunarion, which means a pet, a puppy, or a household dog. Now, in the ancient world, dogs were kept as pets and depicted as sitting with their masters. The term Jesus uses is softer and would have referred to a pet rather than a dirty scavenger. But lots of people are still going to say, but yeah, he's still calling her a dog. Well, that's where we have to understand what Jesus means. 
Critics assume that Jesus is giving this woman a firm no to her request. But notice that he conditions the statement with the word first. And he said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Jesus isn't telling her no, but he is testing her resolve. He's giving the woman the kind of response that she, as a Gentile, might have expected to receive from any other Jewish teacher at the time. But she refuses to give up and even calls Jesus Lord. This is significant because it is the only time in Mark's gospel where Jesus is addressed as kurios, meaning Lord. In other words, she demonstrates her conviction. We cannot miss the fact that Jesus is doing something similar to what we might call playing the devil's advocate. By phrasing his response to her request in the way that he does, he sets up a test and presumably is not disappointed when the Syrophoenician woman passes with flying colors. In this sense, Jesus is like a wise teacher who establishes a problem for his student to work out. If we could see the scene as it played out, I have absolutely no doubt that Jesus must have said what he did with just a hint of sarcasm or maybe a twinkle in his eye, maybe a grin on his face. And we can even read the woman's response as a kind of playful banter. Well, I think we can see this is what's going on because Jesus follows a general pattern when it comes to these kinds of encounters during his ministry. Someone needs healing, but Jesus says something that requires a response first. And very often that will touch on the faith of the individual involved. In Matthew chapter 9, two blind men ask Jesus for mercy. He responds, do you believe that I am able to do this? In Luke 8, a woman with a persistent medical condition touches Jesus' garment and is healed. But he asks, who touched me? And then in Matthew 15, the Syrophoenician woman asks Jesus to heal her daughter, and he says, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. So, these exchanges seem to follow a general pattern, regardless of whether the person is Jewish or Gentile. But this encounter does show us what Jesus is ultimately trying to accomplish, and that's something critics and progressives are missing because they're busy going for the low-hanging fruit. Jesus is using this encounter to tell us, to tell everyone, that his mission isn't just for Jews. It's for everybody. In fact, we see similar statements elsewhere when Jesus says things like, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. See, here he's referring to Gentiles. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus gives us the parable of the royal wedding feast where many of the originally invited guests refuse to attend. And so the king sends servants to gather others so that they might enjoy the festivities. Paul makes it unmistakably clear when he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The message of Jesus isn't just for Jews, it's for everyone, and he brilliantly uses this encounter to let everyone know his ultimate plan for humanity. So, did the Syrophoenician woman change Jesus' mind? There's no evidence of that in the text. Did Jesus repent of racism? Again, there's no evidence that he did so. It might sound really appealing to modern sensibilities to see the Syrophoenician woman speaking truth to power in her encounter with Jesus. But that's really ignoring the true message of the text, which is so much better and so much more comprehensive than the narrow-minded interpretation of progressive Christians and other critics of the Bible. Jesus is for every single person, regardless of race, color, or creed. And his encounter with the Syrophoenician woman proves it.